Hello everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeler Bench. Back we are now with the A20 from Hong Kong Models and uh, this is part 21. Now, as you know, parts, I think it was 19 and 20, or was it 18, 19 and 20, we had to veer off um, and we did some work on, well, we actually built the engines, didn't we? Um, because I didn't have the oxygen hose. And then lovely Bob over at MDC sent me some oxygen hose along with other, many other goodies which I reviewed on the channel. So there's our 132nd scale oxygen hose there. You get four, four lengths and it's very, very nice indeed. And I've just added it here. Now, I've been looking everywhere for a detail of where the oxygen hose goes. And what I've actually done is just basically put this hose where the molded on piece was. So there was a there was a piece of, of, of a raised area molded where I've got this piece. And I've just purposely got it sticking out a bit so it becomes a bit more obvious. So we can see it there. It's just something else to look at in the cockpit. So I'm assuming this end here is where the you know, the, the piece that the, the pilot plugs into his um, mask if he needs it. And then this goes off to a, a regulator up here or something. So um, that's what I've done. I've just stuck it in like that. Not sure about accuracy. If you know better, please tell me in the comments below. Um, but that's where it's going to be. So it's time to close the fuselage up. Uh, it's, it's, that, it's that golden time. Now, as you can see, I've removed all the paint from the, it, the uh, mating faces. And that's all looking good. The one thing I must do before I do anything else is actually put some silver up in here I think maybe some foil or something up in there just so that when we put the lenses in it doesn't look all grey in behind there we could always just paint the back of the lenses but they can look a little bit um a little bit fake you know when they're just painted silver so I'm going to get some shiny tape or something and put down in there and uh or just some aluminium foil and we'll go from there um but here we are you can see in the cockpit all that lovely lovely detail it's not going to be completely covered up but that detail in there pretty much will be. So um, yeah, you can't really see much in there at all. You you sort of look up in the bomb bay and you can see just sort of just see some of it. But you know the details there. It's very very nice, but it can't be seen. All this detail here, all these boxes and that can't be seen unless you open up these panels. We got all this detail here. This is going to be below the turret. So we'll obviously take the turret out to look in there. We've got the gun in the back. It's got the gas patch barrel in it. I've used the Hong Kong model's gun because, you know, when you look up in there, you can't really see it. This door, if you're going to have this door open, it needs to be fitted now. It's not caught up in the instructions, but it is shown. And what I've done here, you can see I've put a piece of plastic card as a gusset just to give it a bit more strength. Um, just so that it's in there a bit more solidly. So, you know, if we put the model down a bit heavy or something, because all you've got down there is that tiny little tab at the bottom. You can see here, it's a tiny little tab. And uh, not really enough to hold it in place solidly. So uh, I'm going to go and get some foil. And we get that down. I've got some foil here for... Um, oh, it does have an aluminium backing to it. This is for uh, lunar module projects and stuff. I'm going to get some aluminium foil from down in the kitchen that's, gonna, that's really shiny. And just sort of stick it in there. Just put a strip in there and stick it in with a bit of super glue just so it's a bit reflective. So I'll see you in a second. All right, so we've got that glued in now. Just a strip of aluminium foil with its shiny side facing out, just to give some of the through reflective for the lights to see. So here we go. So there's that fuselage side there. There's that fuselage side there. And we're going to say goodbye <laughs> to it all. So uh, this is going to be, it's great that it's got these little wing tabs on here to hold on to. It makes life a lot easier. So we're going to just get this together just like so just make sure everything lines up you can see we've got the, the bottom is all lined up there we've got the front all lined up there that's all going together nicely so the tail is all together that's beautiful beautiful there now you can see the the reason I put the aluminium foil in there you can see the um, the reflections so just looking here we've got a bit of a gap here which I can't close up so I'm just looking we need to remove some material from a bulkhead or something there because here I can't close it up so something's not quite right there 
I can close it up there, I can close up the nose, I can close up here, I can close up there, I can close up there. Right, so we have to now have a look. We may be into the wing not wings world here, which is where when you start putting paint on things, things don't fit together so well. So uh, the issue we have is here, so it's probably this area here. So let's just get a sanding stick. remove some of this bulkhead here it's not the top it's only the bottom and make sure we get all that dust out okay so I can see we've got a, a hair or something there in the paint I'm not sure that's not going to give us a problem um, and it may also be worthwhile just removing some plastic from the end of there just to see if that's giving us any problems. There we go. So that's that done. Right. Sorry if I was off camera then, guys. So I'll just try and get this together again. We'll see how it looks. I don't really want to be pulling this apart too many times because something's going to get broken. I just feel it in my bones. There we go. See what did I just say? So that's going together now. So I'm not sure if it was that bit of plastic or, or what, but uh, that's going together now. Absolutely fine. Uh, it needs a little bit more removed, so we'll do that. So this is what I'm saying, we keep taking it apart and snapping it back together. It's that, it's that impact, the snap, that's going to make it uh, break. So what we're going to do, we're just going to put this, scrape the glue away from there. And we'll scrape the glue from the back of here. I think probably what's happened, it's probably caught the floor or something as I was putting it back together. So just clean that up I'm gonna get some of my super glue that I put in here I'm gonna get that get plenty on there and we're gonna get this glued on where it should go I've held it too deep my tweezers are stopping me getting it on so there we go. There we are, that's in place. I think that bulkhead may well have just caught the corner of it. So we'll just bring it forward a tad. Just like so. so that's in place now. What I'm going to do is just remove plastic from here just to help that go together a little bit nicer make sure we keep all that dust out so there we go right I'm gonna let that go off before I start doing anything else because I don't want to be that's probably gone off this is the problem with all this little bits of photo etch and everything. This is where you get stuck into problems if you're not careful. So you can see that box is up against the bulkhead. So any slight misalignment whilst putting this together is going to make that break away. There we go. So that's gone together now. And hopefully that is the last time I have to take it apart. That's all closing up lovely. That's good. That's good. Okay, right. So, what I'm kind of tempted to do is put a drop of super glue on the bottom of that box so that it's also glued to the bulkhead.
tempted to put a drop of super glue on here on this bottom corner and then that will sit against the bulkhead and hopefully glue it into place. Anyway, you can see that box in there, it's up against that bulkhead behind the seat, so that can stay together now. So I'm going to grab my Rebel Hobby from Sweden clamps. Just make sure that's all together there. That's lovely, that's all together there. And then we'll grab some tape. Not long enough. Pull this together here. That's cool. And then we're good to go. So we can grab another Rebel Hobby clamp, and I've lost the rubber strip off of that one. So I don't really want to use that on any detail area, so I'll use it here. It's just going to hold that together. It's not really doing a very good job, is it? Basically, we've got the fuselage together now. So there we are. So it's just a case of adding some cement and uh, slowly going along it and getting it all glued together and uh, making sure we don't mess up. So I'm just hoping I haven't missed anything out. I'm just going to have a quick look in the instructions so we can have a quick look together. And we've got, we know we've got all the cockpit done because we've got it full of aftermarket from Edward, Airscale, Anise, HGW and ASK. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's what we've got in there. The turret here, I'm waiting for some new parts to come for that. Um, we've done all this, we've done all that, that's all good. We've built the bombs, but we haven't put them in yet. Have we built the bombs? I'm not sure if we built the bombs or not, I can't remember now. Um... We've done all the Bombay, that's all together. We've done all this. We haven't fitted the dinghy yet because I'm probably going to make a better one. We've done all this, that's all gone in. We've done all this, we've done all that. All those bulkheads are in the back. So yeah, we've done that gun there. So we're getting the fuselage halves together. Next we're going to be looking at control surfaces. So, right. So that's all clamped together up front. I think what I'm going to do take that clamp off of there. I'm going to find that bit of rubber. In fact, what I'll do is I'll get one of these clamps over here because they're holding something else that I don't want to show you. So uh, what I can do is get this clamp on here and that will hold that bit together. So what I'm going to do is glue this area here. So I'm going to move this clamp up higher. pull that together. So I'm going to glue this area here and we're going to glue that area under there and then we're going to slowly move along the fuselage but I'm not going to bore you with that. We'll just do some here and luckily because of this we can glue this from inside look. so we can get some cement into here get a nice big drop of cement in there get a nice strong joint get the plastic all welded together nicely and then this area here, I should be able to just put some on the end and it will capillary into the joint. Just to make sure I'll put some over there. I'm going to move that clamp further down so it's concentrating its pressure on the end there. And there we go. What a lovely fit all of this is. Also, you've got to be aware when you're doing stuff like this, always look, there's a hole in there. Look, you can see a hole in that cowl. Yeah, so obviously the, the glue can't capillary past that, so we need to make sure we get some cement 
in there and I'm just going to put some, some more in there and then we can get that all sanded out. I don't want to put too much on the top there because I think there's some very faint rivet detail around the edge. I don't want to be ruining that. We'll just get some on there. There we go. That's, that's going to weld together beautifully. And then we can just leave that to dry for a few hours and then move along. And just move our way back. You can see everything's coming together perfectly, nothing's fouling, all the panel lines are lining up beautifully. This is just such a lovely kit. And that there's going to take a good old clamping to get that together there. In fact, I think I'm going to take this clamp off of that part that I've got there. And I think what I'm going to do is clamp. This clamp has just decided to fall apart, which is rather inconvenient. So I'm going to get that clamp on there, clamp the bottom of this bomb bay together, and get some cement in there so that we get a nice strong joint in there. And I'm also going to put some along the edge of this door here, sorry not door, bulkhead, just to make sure we've got a really strong joint because we do not want this cracking open after it's all been glued together. You can see we've got a gap here, so I'm not going to put any cement in there. But I am going to cement that area there. And that area there. Okay. So there we are. Right, I shall see you back. Probably be tomorrow for me now, but uh, there we go. We're going to get that clamp together nice and solid. See you in a minute. Okay, next day, all the clamps are off. As you can see, all the seams are done. And I've gone over with some extra thin over all the seams just to make sure we haven't got any little dry patches in there that show their ugly head once the glue is dry. We're going to have to get some filler in here on the very edge of that, uh, that cowling there. So, uh, yeah, all, all in all, very, very nice. The... Um, compass there is very very close to the control column I probably should have put it a bit further forward but hey ho that's it it's in there now it's done um, I could actually bend it a bit because it is on a piece of brass but I'm not going to chance that so there we go that's it um, I think in reality the control column could do with coming back a bit as well so if you if you feel that way inclined then perhaps do that but um, you know other than that I mean, I'm you know at the end of the day, it's a plastic model. It's not a flying scale model, is it? So, uh, it's, you know, it's not going to be an issue. But um, I, I do know for a fact that on the um, on the JK, which is currently in the post to me today, to give you an idea of time today, is Tuesday the 6th of February 2024. Um, and I have the JK in the post. Apparently, um, I have the first sample in the world. I don't know. I think that's. I don't know why Neil would tell me that, and it may not be true. But uh, we shall see. Um, it will be interesting to see the response when I review the kit when it arrives. Um, but there we go. So the fuselage halves are together. So what they're telling us to do now in the instructions, once you've got that together, is go on and make all your fin and your tail planes and rudder and all that. I'm not going to do that because look over the page and we've got this fairly sort of major sub-assembly part here and we've got this part here this is E6 so this is going to go down and sit on the top of the fuselage and there's some seam work in there to take care of so I'm going to get that on now and let that dry uh, and we can work on that at the same time as we work on the, the fuselage seams I don't like to work on fuselage seams until I know it's all sort of dry and hard and everything otherwise you can come back in a few days and you'll find you've got a sink mark there where the solvents from the glue have evaporated so what we'll do is leave it like this um, and then once we uh, we know all the solvents are gone then we can come back and we can come in with some um, super glue or whatever and fill those gaps so this piece here this is uh, E6 and this sits on the top I was going to paint the inside green but I've had a look and you cannot see up inside there at all to see the top of that panel so I'm not going to worry about that there is a clear bit that goes on the back, but there's also a, a panel that goes goes in in front of it. Where was it? It was H, H something or other. There it is there. That panel's going to go in there, and that's obviously got some 
rear looking lights or radar or something I don't know what we'll, we'll, we'll look into that but um that there is going to go inside there and then a clear panel goes over the top so we're not going to see up inside there at all now this panel here fits lovely um, we can see here we've got a bit of a gap and because of the shape of the fuse lines there's been some inserts in the tooling some sliding slide molding going on and there's just a tiny little mismatch so I've I've cleaned it up as best as I can and got the steps out but you can see when it's clamped down it sort of pretty well closes up um, but I don't want to take too much out for fear of ruining the the fit so what I've done is made the, the fin up just loosely and the fin sits in that slot and will fit on there and as you can see we have I mean even without me holding it it's a gorgeous fit um, and it's just going to be a case of Mr. Surfacer and a cotton bud so I'll get that, that job done now I was half tempted to sort of wedge the fuselage apart here because as you can see we have if I get this side nice and flush here I'll say I'll get this side nice and flush here because it's a better fit okay so we're going to sand that away and have that line completely disappear you can see that on the other side we have a tiny step so what I'm tempted to do is do one side at a time and then push it over and clamp it to do the other and this side is pretty much a perfect fit so if we're going to have to do any sanding and filling I'd rather do it on the other side but we also have to bear in mind this piece here is a fillet and it's sitting proud of the skin and it's going to sit proud there too so we need to make sure we've got a step either side which is the same so what I'm going to do is come along with my clamp yes this is a rebel hobby clamp from Sweden I'm going to clamp this in place just like so and make sure it's pushed over one way and then we can get a closed peg onto here and a closed peg onto there to hold that together I must say the way this thing goes together it's just lovely it really is lovely so as you can see we've got a bit of a step there on that fillet for the tailplate there's a little bit of a step there we can blend that out we've got the fuselage nice and flush and we've got a nice step there so I think we'll commit to some cement on the front and we'll just put some down there just put a drop of cement down there and let that capillary end do its thing get a good bit of weld action again clamp it before you glue it do not glue it and then clamp it you'll get glue oozing out everywhere it'll look a right mess so that's that done and I think we can also get some cement into here into the leading edge we've got to make sure we don't touch these foam parts we get some cement into there as well let that capillary along there and let that do its thing and then we'll leave that for a while to dry Tempted to take that peg off of there and then put some cement into that joint there just like so let that capillary in and then get that clamp back on. I'm not worried if glue oozes out on there because it's obviously the face where the, the tailplane is going to go on. The horizontal stabilizer, whatever you want to call it. But uh, there we go. I'm not going to do the back. I'm going to do the back afterwards because we've got a little bit of a gap there. We've also got to do some manipulation sideways there as well. So there we are. Right. So happy with how that's gone. Leave that to dry and then we should be able to sort of clamp it and push it over a bit and get a bit of a better fit down in there so I'll leave that to dry and then I'll be back this is going to be a long old video this one I don't mean long for you it's going to be a long one for me it's probably going to be two or three days of, of pulling stuff around and uh, I'm just going to make 20 minutes of video sort of thing so I'll see you in a minute all right so about three hours later now <clears throat> four hours later and we're going to glue that side in I've assembled the fin and the rudder they go together really really nicely little tiny bit of super glue in the front there um, quite a thick trailing edge but I think it's probably to scale 
because they would have been fairly thickish in those days so um that's okay beautiful way this goes together look at that they, they've got these you've got these sort of hinges on here and then you've got pins in there and they literally push together and there's enough friction there that they don't just all sag and flop about absolutely lovely so you can have positionable surfaces but they don't just flop about I mean I'm saying that I'm not sure I'm hoping it's not that um a little bit of spruited there that's left that was making it like that I don't think it was nope you can hear it's kind of I think it's the seam in there going over the seam in there but they they kind of sit horizontal just, even if I shake it it stays where it is but you can easily position it wherever you like obviously the rudder is not such an issue because it's vertical but you can see it sort of automatically goes back to center I don't think that was intended was it Neil <laughs> but uh that's very good whoops so um yeah it's uh very nice I mean we remember the old trumpeter ones with the the bloody wire rods and the bits of photo etch and you put it all together it's all floppy and hanging about and the Tamiya stuff can be a bit like that as well um but this this is really nice really that is lovely so very nice um and then they're just going to sit in there like that as you can see and obviously we'll have a bit of a, a swoop on them a bit of dihedral and then you can position your flaps or whatever as you do your elevators as you want them the rudder let's get this clamp off the rudder and fib we've got to be careful we've got this little I'm not sure if that's an antenna or a pitot tube I have to check but that's just going to sit on there like that and as you can see slightest bit of finger pressure and we've got an absolutely gorgeous fit on both sides so uh, a bit of Mr Surfacer cotton bud job done right so there we go so we're really starting like an A20 now with a great big tail it's like a big Hercules in it um no it's nothing like a Hercules at all is it nice so uh, we'll have to make sure as well this is for the newer modelers out there where is my curved knife there it is it's hiding always always get rid of that center seam there always scrape that away if anything you want to make that face slightly concave and then you won't get any interference with how it fits onto the um, that's better so there we go so uh, yeah all very nice indeed right so what we've got to do now if you remember we glued this side we've got that nice and flush there's hardly any step there at all so I'll just take a little drop of super glue in there as a filler once the once the um, extra thin is cured let the extra thin cure otherwise you'll come back in a couple of days and you'll have a sink mark there go away plastic scrapings go away and then this side as you can see we can if you can see that but I could manipulate it this this seam here I could manipulate it to get rid of it or make it worse or whatever so what I'm going to do here is put a clamp on here on an angle and hopefully pull it over that way now the trouble is with that we have the bloody is this the one where the pad comes off I don't want to damage the plastic though do I um, I wonder if I can do it on there with a peg if I push it over on that one you can see here we can you can see how much we can move it around look you look at that there I wonder if I can move that over I don't think that's enough I wonder if I can do it like this that clamp on my angle to pull that over well, the trouble is it's pulling it up as well and that peg won't go over there will it no it won't well it might do mm, but will it stay on there so once you get the glue on once the peg flies off then you start getting oozage we don't want oozage do we okay so got to find some way of clamping that in position I could use a rubber band I guess but I really want to get that I wonder if I can hold it like that and clamp this this way it's 
It's just trying to get rid of that step there. There we go, it's gone. Right, I'm going to glue that like that. In fact, I'm going to use some quick setting. It should give it a quick little bite. There we go. Let's give that a quick little bite to be going on with. I think what I'm going to do is grab another clamp and just give it a gentle squeeze down. And it's pushing it over. See, I want the step there as well. It's starting to play about now. It's got the glue on it. It's starting to move around. I think we're going to have to make do with that. Um, I can't think of anything else I can do. We've got a bit of a step there. Remember, we wanted that step because this is like a fairing that's riveted on top. There we go, I'm going to leave that like that and hopefully that'll be okay. So I don't like to be hopeful, I like to be, uh, I like to do it, not, not hope that it's going to be okay. I want it to be okay because I've done it right. But anyway, that'll stay there and then we can do some sanding work. We might have to do a bit of re-revisiting, whatever, but we can work that out, I'm sure. So there we are. So as you can see, I haven't glued the rear end yet because that needs to be shifted back and manipulated the same. I haven't glued up the sides here either or down here. I've only glued up there. So um, take your time, get it right. You may find yours will just drop on and fit straight away. Good enough for you. You might be happy with it, but I'm just um, fussing about how to make it look good. And then here, these leading edges and stuff, we'll just give them a very quick sand. And I think that'll be enough. They don't need anything else. They fit together so nicely. We'll get some uh, grey primer on them and then we'll see as a seam checker. Just to see that the... Just to see that the seams are all good. There we are. So, this one as I say is going to need some super glue in it. I don't know if I've got anything left here. No, I haven't. The next time I get some super glue out, I'm going to put some, just we've got a light, a light seam there and there's a light seam there. It just needs to be sorted. So that's something we can play with. Right. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we've got the, um, <clears throat> got the clamps off. So we've now got it glued on both sides. As you can see, there is a little bit of a step here, just here. It looks a lot worse than it is because there's actually a gap there as well where that slide molding bit was. But here it's fairly smooth, so that's all good. So just a bit of gentle scraping. I've got our uh, round blade. Just gently scrape at that seam. And that's going to be lovely. And when we get that sand and blended, that's going to be beautiful. So there we are. So we get a nice seam-free joint there. So when it comes to looking at the back end... Um, We've got the same sort of issue again. As you can see, when I push it down, this side is sitting lovely. This side is stepped out. So rather than try and sort of hold it all and everything, um, again, I'm going to work on one side at a time. So if I put a peg on there and pull that trailing edge together, that's not really strong enough. Have I got a strong enough one here? This feels a bit stronger. Just want to pull that trailing edge together real tight. Um, maybe a bulldog clamp would be better, but I think they might slip it off. Yeah, that's not going to stay on there. Um, I need to hold that together real tight. 
uh, because it, it wants to come apart. So I think what I'm going to do is put some extra thin quick setting in there. Sorry, I'm off camera. Sorry, guys. So I'll put some extra thin quick setting in there. And then get that together to get it going. It's Quick setting is, is literally what it says on the tin. It is very, uh, very quick. Um, I've also just noticed I've moved the camera closer to the bench because I was looking at something else. I've been making lots of video stuff today. So I've been moving the camera around and changing the lighting and everything. But, um, There we go. So that's gone together now. So hopefully I can just put a peg on there and that will just hold it together just to assist the glue rather than try and hold it together totally. But because it's a trading edge, it really doesn't want to stay on there. Okay, so we're going to have to get this done. So I want to get this area here nice and flush. As you can see, I don't care about this side. It's all stepped. It's all out. We'll deal with that afterwards. So I'm going to see if I can make this Rebel Hobby Clamp stay in place because it's all tapered, it's going to want to slide off. Do we have a nice stepless joint? I believe we do. Yes, that's very nice indeed. So we'll get some extra thin into there. get it on the inside which is cool we need to get some all the way into that trailing edge there make sure it's all gone down nice and snug as you can see we can move this side around once we've got the other side done so there we are so yeah, this is a long-winded way about going about, and some of you may think, oh, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. And if that's what you think, then just do yours differently. But uh, I'm just showing you how, how I go about using a bit of care and a bit of methodology to try and minimise the work to get a nice seam. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm concentrating on this area here at the front so that we get that step like I say with that panel overlaid there so it all pays dividends in the end because yeah you can you can have this all mismatched and come in there and sand it all nice and smooth and then have to rescribe and re-rivet and everything but I'm hoping here I can just um, do my pre-riveting thing and we've got rivets above and below that line and I'm just hoping I can come in with a with a pointy tool and just pick up in those rivets and just deepen them slightly and then when I sand over them they won't disappear you can see that is a doddle much easier than trying to replicate the spacing of the riveting and have a straight line it's much easier to uh, sort of pre-rivet it rather than post this is something I do a lot be really careful because they're so shallow the old ones the original ones there we go so we've now got all those rivets enhanced which you probably can't even see but so we've got all those rivets enhanced so now when we sand over there they won't disappear right so we could do the same on that leading edge of that tailplane as well so we've got to let that dry now, which I seem to say all the time. All I've done today is made videos where I'm stopping and letting things dry and then working on something else. So uh, there's lots to come on the channel. You'll be pleased to know there'll be a lot, to, lots to watch. There we go. I'm just going to get another drop of extra thin into that trading edge because we've got a gap there, which is a beautiful invitation to get some capillary action going 
there we are right I'll see you in a few seconds but for me it's going to be tomorrow okay that's done so we've done the front we've done this back side here you can see we've got a lovely joint in there and then here we've got to get this this seam here sorted so what we're going to do is just get it clamped we can make the clamp stay on there so we'll get it into the correct position yeah it doesn't want to stay i wonder if i can just use a peg on this trailing edge here that'll be enough to hold it It just needs a bit of pressure just to keep it closed up. But, uh, let's, get some, let's get a drop of quick setting on there and see if I can sort of tack it in place because it's just just needs to go over just a touch as you can see. If I can sort of preload it and get some cement into there as well very very difficult to clamp because obviously everything is tapered and the, all the clamps just want to slide off I think I'm actually gonna have to hold it um, what I could do is put some super glue on the inside to lock it a bit of accelerator but I'd rather not Grab some extra thin. Get it down that mating face there for the tailplane. What I need here is a really weak. I need something weak. Oh. Uh, just need something weak just to hold it there. I'm kind of wondering if I can get another one of these um, Rebel Hobby Clouds in there just to pinch it and hold it. That's a bit too much. There we go, that seems to have done it. So there we are. We'll just leave that to go off for 10 minutes or something and I'll have a look when I can still sort of manipulate it. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. Okay, there's what I ended up doing. Put the clamp like that and that's basically holding it together and over. So uh, that's worked out perfect. So we'll leave that to dry. And then um, we'll come back and look at doing some uh, seam work on it. And there we go. All nice. But don't worry, none of this is glued on. <laughs> um, all I've done is I've put these together and sanded the joints. They'll go together lovely. And I've sanded the, the trailing edges. And it's all lovely. So um, this piece here fits on here. You, I've shown you how I've gone around it. You, you may choose to do it differently, whatever. But it was, it was my way of making sure that it all ends up lovely. You can see... It's all beautifully in line. We've got a panel line. We've got a panel line here. Okay, there's a panel line there, and there's a panel line there, and in between there is the seam. So you can see it's worth taking your time because that is literally just sanded. I've brushed some Mr. Surfacer over there, and I mean, the Mr. Surfacer is all gone. It's it's really really nice. Um, so. that's all come out lovely okay that's all lovely there so uh, there we are super glue in there super glue in there and then nothing in here just a drop brush of mr service over the top just to make sure and as you can see it's come out really really nice now what i did notice is after i got this on i had a slight step here so i was paying so much attention to this front end i didn't pay any attention to the back what i noticed as i said in my a20j review if you you need to sand off a few thousand from the front or just check it first 
uh, and, and if I'd have noticed, I would have sanded a few thou off the front here, just so it could sit further forward, because I had a bit of a step there, and I've, I've had to come in and just basically sand it flat, like so. So there we are. Um, but that rear piece is going to go in there lovely, I expect. In fact, I'll get that off and we'll see how that fits. Okay, so I've got that off and it fits in there. Lovely. Um, I've, I, I have just literally gone around and just removed the sharp edge. But uh, you can see that it sits in there really, really nice. So I think what we'll do is grab a drop of extra thin. And that's our rear end closed up. And that will also add some rigidity to that joint. There we go. So that's ready. We won't put the clear part on yet. So uh, there we go. I'm not sure what colour those lights are going to be. We'll have a look in our A20 reference book. Um, now with regard to these lights underneath, um, I really don't know what to do. Now Zinzan has been commenting and saying, you know, that apparently they are fitted to all American aircraft in all services. Um, but I can only find one picture that shows an A20 with these lights. And the one picture I've got has them all bunched up together. It's probably like instead of having that one there, that one could be in the middle of those two. So, you know, have another one here kind of thing. And that would probably be more correct. So I've got my A20 book out. In fact, I'll get it. I'll show you now. OK, so I've got my uh, Bible here. So it's called the Douglas A20 Havoc. And to be honest, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. And here's the reason. Um, OK, so we've got recognition lights, which is what we're talking about. Yeah, these three here. So recognition lights were installed with a white light on top of the fuselage near the base of the vertical stabilizer. So that's one there. OK. Um, and amber, green and red on the belly. Power was supplied from a 15 amp circuit, blah, 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 blah. Operated by a three position switch, yeah. Um, in A20G1 to 15, they were wired so that any combination of downward lights could be selected. Wiring to the blah, blah, blah. Um, alternate red, green and clear lenses were provided, starting with A20G20 DOs. A three position switch connected with all four recognition lights in the opposition of the circuits were open, blah, 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 blah. Uh, beginning with A20G40 duos, so this is a 25, so this is going to have the 1 and the 3, um, but beginning with A20G40 duos, the British type upward recognition light was removed and replaced by an American Air Force type standard upward recognition light. Beginning with A20G45 duos, the British type downward recognition lights and switch box were removed and replaced by American Air Force standard downward recognition lights. Um, What's American and British standard? What, what are they? The guy that's written this book expects everyone to be an absolute master of knowledge on this subject. It's the same here. Formation lights. The DB7B and A20A had formation T lights mounted on the upper surfaces of the fuselage and the horizontal stabilizer. These lights were controlled by a rheostat, blah, 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 blah. Power was supplied, blah, 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 blah. On A20G, 1 to 15, power was supplied through a fifth, blah, 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 blah. On each of the uh, in the form lights, one each in the tail and wing tips, and beginning with A20G20 DOs, that's this one, a 15 out circuit breaker protected the circuit. Commencing with A20G25 DOs, the circuit was changed to incorporate a 3 and fixed resistant British type wingtip and tail formation lights, and the wingtip lights were changed from type A, A8 to type A9. On A20G45 DOs, A20J20 DOs, and A20Hs, and K1 DO to 10 DO, the two lights on the vertical stabilizer were removed and a tail cone light was substituted. Right. On this kit, I see no lights. I have these lights here, okay, which have a clear cover which is going to go over them. Okay, we've got here there's G. The G sprue is clear. You can see from here, the, well, somewhere here, the clear parts. G is the clear sprue, so that's G. That's a clear part. Let's find the, the windscreen. There we go. The windscreen is G1. So you can see that the clear parts are G. So we assume that that's what they mean here. Uh, the ver two lights on the vertical stabilizer were removed and a tail cone light was substituted. So the tail cone light was substituted. So is that the tail cone light there? If so, it's wrong for this aircraft. But then when you look in the colour schemes, we've got the tail cone 
painted over and I see no lights on the tail whatsoever. I see no lights on the spine other than that one there. So what do we do? What do we do? What are T lights? What are A9 and A9 and A8 lights? What's an AN3018 switch? I mean, it goes into all this detail about the fuses, the wiring, the switch gear and everything, but tells you nothing about what was actually in. I mean, yeah, it tells you what was installed, but what is it? You know, they may as well say an, an XY747 was fitted to the left wing. You know, it's, it's just absolute garbage. When you look at the wing leader books, you know, and what they give you for 20 quid in, what, 75 pages, there's more information in there than there is in this whole bloody thing. It's just full of garbage. It really is. Look at it. You've got loads and loads of stuff about all the different aircraft, but there's nothing that's telling you about the aircraft itself. I'm sure there is, but you've got to dig through 500 odd pages to find it. You know, we've got pictures of the bloody designers and all that. Great. <laughs> Brilliant. That's just what I'm looking for. Look, you know, that's just the picture I want to see when I don't know what a bloody A8 light is. Ugh. So if anyone could help me, if anyone out there is an A20 expert, and they can tell me what colour these lights should be. Okay, if indeed they're the right size. It looks like they're the right size because I found online a drawing of an American uh, recognition light and it was scaled down to about three millimetres diameter, which is about what, what that is. It's probably a little bit bigger, but I guess we've got a rim around it. Um, so tell me what colour they've got to be because uh, there's all sorts of different stories about what colour they are. And also, is that the upward recognition light and should that be painted over or not? I would love to know, please. But uh, I'm having a really stressful day today. I went to start my Hardy and the alarm went off and now I can't stop the alarm. Even if I disconnect the battery, the alarm still goes off. It's got its own power supply, which is very annoying because my Harley is in the house. So I've now got the battery off being charged up and I phoned the dealer and they don't know. So great. Probably have to end up taking it in and spend thousands of pounds. Um, so yeah, really having a good day today. Brilliant. I've got a bloody thick headache now where I've been working on a bike with the bloody alarm gone off. I should have put some earplugs in. So moving on, looking at the instructions, ran over. Um, what they're asking us to do now after we've built up all this, this empennage for the tail, I'm going to put a red mark where my red marker is. I'm going to put a red mark there and there. So I don't forget those bits. Um, and what they're asking us to do now is go on and fit the canopy, the turret, the tail empennage and everything. I don't want to do that. I want to get the nose done first because I don't want to go, I don't want to handle the model and have it, you know, with all this bits and pieces laying around. So I'm going to leave all that off. Uh, we're going to get the nose done now. I'm not going to have the tail on that either because it's just going to make it harder to handle to pick it up and sand it and move around. So I'd rather get the, the whole sort of fuselage done and then we can start looking at putting the bits and pieces on. But looking here in the nose, you can see here we've got these ammo boxes. So we've got uh, two there, and we've got two there, and we've got two there, and these are in halves, so they're going to have a seam to do, and these are in halves the other way around. They're very clever. Um, what they've done here, they've got these designed so that they go together like that. You can see they go together like that, but in the middle the seam won't be seen, so it's really nice they've done it that way. So thanks for that, Neil. That's a great design. These are in halves, so these will have a visible seam which will have to be taken care of around the outside edge. So, because you're going to see that through the doors, if we indeed have the doors open, I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. So I'm going to get those all glued together and then they can be left to dry before we do the next part. Oh, so, uh, yeah, if anyone can help with any of this information, should that tail cone be painted over? Should there be lights added on here? Are there no lights? Where are they? What are they? There's, there's no lights on here. Um, and I notice when you come to the wings, um, you have the option on the wing tip of where's the bloody wing tips? There they are. There, you've got the option of using a clear or a plastic part there. So it's saying in that book about certain that you just didn't have the lights and did have the lights and had a different type of light and blah blah blah. I don't know what I'm bloody doing here. I just wish I don't want to knock Hong Kong models here because I got this you know, for, a, for a, um, a review online. But I just wish they would do what Tamiya do. I wish every manufacturer would. I think Tamiya are really the only people that do it. Airfix are pretty good at it as well, to be honest. 
is to tell you, you know, this one is for option A and this one is for option B. You know, and then you go to the back, you think, well, I'm building option A, so I'll use that. You know, um, but they haven't done that. And it's sort of hard to know what to do. It's like they've got that clear cover going on, but then in the pictures it's all painted over. So, you know, I found another picture in that book where they had the tail cone and then it had two little extensions with the lights stuck on. But anyway, um, I'm just stressed out today. I need to go get drunk or something, don't I? So I'll, um, I'll see you all soon. We'll call that a day for this one. And I'll see you all soon. And we're going to be get making, making a big start on the nose. So that'll be fun. That'll be a bit of interesting building for a change. Right, I'll see you all soon. Oh, I've, I've also I've done all the panel lines. And I've gone round with the riveting tool. And uh, I've got all that done. I've got, still got some work to do around this area here. But I'm not sure what I'm doing with these lights. I can't find a picture of an American A20 with those lights on. But the book says it's had them. So, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.